Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're Performance Agile. I'm Eric. And I'm Vince. And today, we're talking story mapping. Our quote for story mapping today is an ancient Chinese proverb from Lao Tzu. And it goes, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So for the folks at home that are not familiar with the term story mapping, what is it? Because we might have some folks that might know what a story is. Yep. We might have some folks that know what like, business mapping or value mapping is. But what is story mapping in context here? What is it sure. All about? There's lots of mapping. There's journey mapping. There's value stream mapping. Yeah, this is none of that. So, so this is a technique. Um, I believe it was created by Jeff Patton. Um, I know that he has written um, a book on it and has done many videos. He's probably the world's renowned expert on story mapping. Um, so we are going to cite a lot of his, uh, his work as his references. Um, it's a great technique. I absolutely love story mapping. Um, of course, you know, people take, um, you know, whatever the original idea was that, that Jeff came up with and, you know, they alter it to their liking. So, um, similarly, you know, we're just going to talk about, um, a, a generic way to, to set it up and, and walk through it and um, the purpose of it. All right. So where do you start? How do you start story mapping? Well, you, you, you start with, you know, your, your high level ideas uh, and we can call them epics, I guess, for now. Um, and story mapping is done from the perspective of the user. So you do want to identify um, who the user is and what the perspective of that user is as you're walking through whatever it is that they will be using this product for. And so that's that's where you start. You start from the perspective of the user. Okay. So why, why would we do this? Why would we engage in the activity of trying to understand the user and then put put these in high level ideals. What what value does this bring to us? Well, I, I think what story mapping has really brought to light, uh, and and why it's so fantastic, is because I think in in projects past, uh, a lot of the work was done because um, either the project manager thought that the capability was was a good idea, or um, someone in the company was feeding that this is what I think that this needs to do. Um, and when you put it in front of a customer and they're like, well, I wouldn't use that, or I certainly wouldn't ask for that. Um, then, you know, you realize then and there that you built the wrong thing. So, you know, taking the perspective of the customer, you know, agile is always about providing value, right? We're all about providing value. So if you're not considering the perspective of your, your customer and these end users, um, Wow, you're already um, headed down the wrong path. So whenever we're building out these wireframed ideas of potentially shippable products for our customer, there's a couple of terms that get thrown around. Minimal viable product and a minimal marketable feature. Are those the same thing? They're not. Where do they differ? So uh, I, I draw my, my reference to, to these definitions um, from the Agile Alliance. Um, and I think that there are other framework um, companies, um, organizers, if you will, that might define these two terms a little bit differently. I, I personally feel that the MVP, the minimum viable product, is um, grossly misunderstood and, and misused. Um, but, you know, the minimum viable product is basically, it's a concept of the product that you're developing. And it, and it really is your smoke and mirrors. You know, it really could be wireframing. It could be just a demo product um, that you would want to get in front of your customer for, you know, like, you know, is, are we headed down the right path? You know what I mean? And so like, what would be the first usable thing that we could deliver that you would find value in, right? So, so that to me, my opinion, and according to Eric Reese from the Agile Alliance, is um, it's a version of a new product which allows a team to uh, collect the maximum amount of validated learning um, about customers and users with the least amount of effort. So that's an MVP. So then what is an MMF? What is a minimal marketable feature? Okay, so that's, in my opinion, and again, I think 
um, I believe this is the opinion of the Agile Alliance as well, is that's what you're delivering. So it is the minimal capability. It is the minimal feature um, set that you would put in production that a user will, will log into, use, um, if it's software, um, and um, get some value from. Uh, because, you know, if you, if you put something in production and no one can use it, then there's really no value, right? right. So the value is um, returned when the customer can actually use what it is that you're developing and says, hey, not only do I like that, um, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to use that again, and I might even recommend it, right? So, so, so that is, in my opinion, the difference between the two. Um, how does that relate to story mapping? Again, so we're taking all of these things in the perspective of the customer. Um, you know, when we're talking about an MVP, we are considering the perspective of the customer, but it's also a systems ap approach, right? Um, so so that there's, there's that technology perspective into the MVP um, with the customer in mind. Um, the, M, the, the minimal marketable feature is more value related and what we're actually delivering that the customer will use. So story mapping is from the perspective of the customer. We're going to we're going to uh, lay out, if you will, and walk through, you know, if we were that customer. Um, and there are many and it could even be a system, a system of systems, right, could also be a customer mm -hmm. in this in this case. Um, how the um, the activities that are involved in order to um, accomplish something within that product and um, get some value from it. So that's what that's what story mapping is is intended to do. Okay. So talking about this this breakdown, then mm -hmm. whenever you're defining users, uh, we're we're trying to get into the headspace of our customer. There's only one customer, right? You don't have to think all the way through the chain of how, you know, let's take the example of a, a pizza shop, mm -hmm. right? You have the customer that's coming into the store mm -hmm. who wants a pizza, mm -hmm. but then you're building a system for the clerks, right? They're, they're also going to be using this and you could use their persona because they're interfacing with this system as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, those are decisions that you'll have to make as you go. So uh, the, the size and complexity of your product and the size and complexity of your product will involve, you know, the personas or the customers, the, the people and the systems um, that are involved um, in your decision making. Um, but when you, when you consider those things, it really alters your, your greater perspective because you might go in very focused on, you know, we want to build this thing and um, it should really do all of these things right and so without really taking the time to, to stop and um, like so who are we really trying to provide value to if we have multiple customers most right um, because demographics uh, might come into play you know there are companies that that build personas that have um, uh, an army of data scientists that are looking out and, and um, drawing um, data uh, on um, user groups and so that you know products that are being developed are, are, are meant to satisfy you know particular user groups or personas. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really it's really very interesting. Um, but simplistically, I know for your your pizza joint, right? Um, yeah, I mean most often who you're trying to satisfy is your customer, right? And, not that we aren't also trying to satisfy employees. Um, the customer is probably the, the persona that's going to bubble up first, right? Would you sure, agree? I would. Yeah. So so in that example, um, what are you trying to do? Yeah, what are your goals? I'm trying to sell a pizza, right? Okay. So if, if we're um, trying to roll out a, um, a digital um, capability, a website, if you will, um, for our customers to order a pizza, we would um, need to consider um, things that our um, service offering is going to provide to customers, right? So what, what would be, just roughly speaking, some of the things that you would do on a website um, if you were going to order food? Well, if I was a pizzeria and you are my customer, mm -hmm. 
and you are not in my physical store location. You're looking at my website. Mm -hmm. I would want you to be able to see my menu. Okay. I would want you to know what choices you have. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a cheese or a pepperoni pizza mm -hmm. and the sizes that you could get, you could get a small, medium, extra large. Mm -hmm. What else would you want to do as a customer ordering pizza? Well, you would either want to call it in mm -hmm. or you would have an order submission process where you can order through the internet and have it delivered mm -hmm. or picked up. Okay. So, so there's options, right? That you would want to, we would want to offer our customers from this particular site. Sure. Um, what else would that customer want to do? Um, if it's uh, regardless, if it's a pickup or delivery, um, you got to pay for it, right? Sure. You right. would want some secure transaction method in there to right. capture the credit card information and, mm -hmm. you know, you get paid. And All that. So usually that kind of information is built into some kind of a, an account profile, right? So do we, do we need to consider, you know, building out some kind of a database of user profiles and, and things like that, right? Potentially. All kinds of things. So, so what we would do is we would, we would consider, well, if I'm a, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to attract buyers, mm -hmm. um, on a commerce site, um, they need to be able to, um, peruse the things that can be ordered that we're offering, um, whatever the options are, um, you gotta, we want them to be able to log in and create an account potentially, right? Um, Hey, we got to pay for that stuff, um, and maybe even track it. So, mm. so right. So we would take those high level things, and we would say, okay. So, um, um, uh, the product catalog, right. catalog, right? You got to pick from the catalog what right. you want, right? Then we got to be able to purchase it, right? And then we want to um, track it. Um, let's just say roughly speaking. Sure. So those would be our high level things like that this customer might want to do from this particular um, site. So those are the goals. You could call them goals. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's really um, on whose approach you take. So some would say it's goals. Um, you could say that those are your epics, right? Um, and then, and then, and then what would you logically think would be the next step? Well, based on the conversation we had about minimal viable product mm -hmm. and minimal marketable features, mm -hmm. you would need to determine what those would be. Yeah. So let's just say um, we're, we're, so we've laid it out now where, and you could do this on, on, on a wall. Um, really, um, there works, are pictures. Well. Yeah, there are pictures of story mapping sessions that, you know, take up a, an entire wall. In some cases, I've heard stories of, you know, they've even taken up entire rooms. Uh, because you can story map and, and use that and continue it and it can live on. So you can see, hmm. you know, yeah, the, the, the evolvement of your product and um, it's really cool. So anyways, let's get back to, um, let's not get too far off track. So, so we've laid out um, some of these high level things that the customer needs to do. Select, purchase, track. Exactly. Select, purchase. Well, yeah, let's yep. just call it that. So now... We're going to look at that and say, well, what can, what does the customer, if I'm that customer, what would I want to do first? So now we're, 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 we're trying to align some logic to it and prioritize at the same time, right? So, so let's logically sequence, you know, what would those activities be? Do we want to track our order first and then, and then pay for it and then see what's in the catalog? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Or do we want to make sure that we can pay for stuff before we ever view it. No. no I'm not thinking no too, right? So we want to we want to be able to view the catalog. So let's just start there. So now we're viewing, we've provided a way for a customer to find us and um, view our catalog. We haven't even set up any kind of a, an account system. You know, we haven't invested in anything like that. We're just simply making our product offering available for viewing. Yep. Okay. So, so now, you know, now that we've done that um, and we want to, you know, consider, well, from there, how do we want to grow this product so that it's 
um, more usable for the, the user to get more out, more value out of it. So things like, well, let me build that, that profile. Let me um, institute a way for them to make selections and uh, re-offering options to those selections. Oh, well, let's make sure we offer a way for them to, to modify their, their selection, things like that. But right off the bat, if we want to get something out on the street that the customer can use, you know, we want to line up all of those things. And so from the customer perspective, that's really important to me. Um, but now, you know, we've, we've got some, some members of our technology team and it's not every member of the technology team yet. Um, but, you know, we, we do want some, you know, engineers who are um, familiar with the enterprise, familiar with um, the, the complexity of the product that's, that's being um, developed. And, um, you know, like, where is this going to reside? So, you know, what is the technology that's needed for this? Is it new? Can we support it? Right. So we need all, all of those perspectives, just not yet sure right so so from this perspective we're saying um you know we we want to just put this out there and so we want to be able to to grow it and scale it as we go so that's why we need their input but right now user perspective if we're a pizza joint especially um you know we want to make sure that we show our menu and so if we can't order it through the site What's the next best thing? You probably want to leave some contact information on your website. Say, hey, we do not yet have the ability for you to purchase, yep. pay, or track online. Right. Got to phone it in. Phone it in. Here's our address. Come and see us now that you you know decided that, oh, I got to have some of this. Right? So it's, it's those things that you offer. Very simple. But that would be your minimal marketable feature. Right. And that's what you would roll out, get the get, you know, some revenue started so that you can continue um, making your product um, more valuable and more robust as you go. Sure. So, yeah. So you would lay these out. <clears throat> and so, you know, you would, um, you know, under purchase, you would, you know, um, implement, you know, story shells. That's what we call, you know, just sticky notes underneath, you know, these big, you know, ideas of, you um, you know, uh, credit card payment. Um, uh, you have sites offering Bitcoin payment now. So yeah, you, you know, you would think of cryptocurrency is right in this day and age. Um, you know, uh, specifying um, pickup or delivery. Um, you know, things like that. Sure. Um, you know, do we even want to track the order? But then, you if know? you're doing delivery, you're going to need to capture the resident location where they live, make mm -hmm. sure they're within your service radius, mm -hmm. have a little bit of logic and math there to determine if you're going to deliver to that address. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and mm -hmm. then you're going to have to give that, pass that along to your driver. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of logic there that would say, if you're going to go down, right, the, the big purchase track, you're going to say collect payment or of payment type, credit mm -hmm. card, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, they want to pay for delivery. Okay, where do you live? Do we support that address? Yep. So, so that's how you you know you you brainstorm all of these different things, right? That the the, the customer might want to do. So once you've done that from your user's perspective, and you've decided you know what's the most important, and you would kind of organize you know vertically, you know, or maybe even vertically and horizontally, you know, some of the different things, you know, your 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 technology experts now kind of weigh in. On well, um, in order for us to do that, we need to also first do this, this, and this um, to get that minimum capability out the door. Sure, and I know like a big thing that a lot of companies deal with these days is if you're going to allow account creation mm -hmm. and then have a credit card stored on file, mm -hmm. you have to encrypt that data at rest, mm -hmm. encrypt it like, while it's being used. Yeah. Because you don't want to be another one of these Fortune 500 companies when their systems get hit and hundreds of millions of credit card uh, users' information has been, you know, potentially endangered. Right? right. They've been hacked and they're being sold. Exactly. Black market. So, so we're not writing stories. Um, we're not fleshing things out yet. This is really high level. So each of your story shells that are up on the board um, 
handful of words, you know, um, as few words as possible, um, ideally. And so now what you're doing is, um, you know, you've got the user perspective and the things, the actual activities and functions and, you know, clickable, you know, um, actionable things that the user would do. Then, you know, your technology experts come in and they kind of, they, they bring that reality, you know, a little bit more into focus by saying, well, um, so in order to get this, and this is, you know, a good idea, um, we might not be able to deliver that next because we've got to do this. And so, and so you're actually kind of visualizing, you know, logically what goes together. What are some of the dependencies, the risk of doing this? Because I, I can tell you with some certainty that if complex projects that have been um, rolled out, especially if there isn't good collaboration between teams, if this is a, a, you know, a multiple team effort, and they're all going off in their own siloed directions, and lo and behold, you know, you're trying to put something in production that the customer can't use because you didn't identify your dependencies, or you know, you've got something that isn't pointing to anything, it's not tied to anything, you know, you uh, you're not right. sharing data with the people you need to be sharing data with, you know, it's those kinds of things. This technique makes all of this, um, it's a very simple visual technique. And you can even connect, you know, like some of these dependencies that say, if I need this, I need to do this to a different colored card. So your user stories shells might be yellow but your technology stories that, that go with these things might be a different color, pick a color. Yeah, because again, uh, having some level of account creation, right? I mean, that might be a user story shell that says mm -hmm. create user account, mm -hmm. but on the technology side, mm -hmm. you're going to need a database. You're going to have to put that user information somewhere yep. to hold it in perpetuity until yeah. you're not, a, not in business anymore. So, so in my opinion, story mapping is a great way to visualize, um, you know, what the user would want. It's also a good way to visualize, you know, what uh, the, the team needs to do to support that. Um, and that, you know, and this is the foundational um, exercise, in my opinion, on um, building up your backlog. It helps you see visually what needs to be in your backlog. It helps you see visually what the priority should be from those perspectives. Um, and then you start fleshing them out, you know, writing your user stories, your acceptance criteria, your definition of done, you know, and you'll have these things on your, your map, your story map, your wall, your board, if you do it digitally or whatever, um, to refer back to. It doesn't, you don't trash it, you know, just because you've done one story mapping session. It should live on, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, and so the, the technology team can take that one step further even and so they can story map out even more what that team needs to do, you know, like if they really want to do that, they can do that to build out, you know, um, their tasks, you know, to, to do those things, you know, like what's all the things, what are the, the dependencies and, and et cetera. Um, I love it. I think it's a great technique. Um, and I think you will too, if you give it a try. Um, if you haven't done it before, it is not meant to be complicated. Um, and it can actually be a little fun, you know, because... You'd be surprised you'll have some aha moments. You're like, wow, you know, I've been on a project before where, you know, we did something similar and we completely forgot about that because, you know, it just seemed so simple um, and we were more focused on other things and we completely forgot about, you know, one or two of these things that we just identified. Um, and wow, what a difference maker it is when, 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 you, when you're developing something and you realize, oh, we kind of forgot to, to, to consider this. And so just a great technique for that. Well, that's it for today, folks. Appreciate you joining us for another video and sticking with us the whole way through. And if you really like what we do here, please don't forget to hit subscribe, leave a like, share with your friends and coworkers and leave us a comment below. Let us know how we're doing. And if there's a topic you want us to cover, leave that too. As you can see, we're running a little low in the topic column. So we would love to hear what you want to talk about. But until then, catch you in the next video.